Howdy again everyone, and now it's time for something really exciting. Fuji have generated a lot of talk recently by releasing this little monster, their new XF 50mm f1.0 RWR. This is only the second lens in the world to have an aperture as bright as f1.0 and autofocus, making it really exciting to use out in the real world. The lens costs $1,500 in the US or £1,500 in the UK, so it definitely missed out on a place in my recent video about low budget Fuji options. But then again, if it turns out to be any good, the excitement and usability factors will probably ensure that it sells pretty well. I'd like to thank Fuji UK for loaning me a copy of this lens for a week or two, but as usual, this is a totally independent review. We'll be looking at both its strengths and its weaknesses. This lens was initially conceived to be a 33mm f1.0 design, which also would have been pretty spectacular, but designing a wider angle lens with such a bright aperture proved a bit too problematic and so it morphed itself into this 50mm f1.0 lens. Short telephoto lenses are a bit easier for manufacturers to design and also that 50mm focal length is a bit more desirable for portrait pictures. On Fuji's APS-C X system cameras, it's the full frame equivalent of a 76mm lens with a depth of field of about f1.5, so it will give you a real flavour of using a full frame camera system, but on Fuji. In fact, as you can see here, its dimensions are very very similar to this full frame 85mm f1.4 lens. But the advantage of the Fuji optic is that that maximum aperture of f1.0 will mean that an enormous light intensity is hitting your camera's sensor, leaving you with much faster shutter speeds than 99% of all other lenses. f1.0 is twice as bright as f1.4 and 66% brighter than f1.2, so it really does give you a substantial advantage. So, this is a dream lens not only for getting out of focus backgrounds, but for shooting indoors and in darker situations. It could be an incredible lens for wedding photography or video work, for example, if you've stabilised it, it doesn't have image stabilisation. Well, let's take a look at its build quality first, it's more or less second to none here. The lens is big and heavy at 845 grams or nearly 2 pounds. It will dwarf a smaller sized Fuji camera if used on it. It's metallic and very solid feeling, and it's well weather sealed too, with a generous weather sealing gasket around the mount. It features one of Fuji's nice tactile aperture rings, with gentle clicks at every third of a stop. One minor criticism I'd make here is that it's a bit too easy to accidentally change the aperture away from f1.0 when shooting, that's something to keep an eye on. The metallic focus ring turns extremely smoothly. As you can see here, the way it works with the focus motor is pretty jerky though, so actually using it is not the smoothest experience. You can also see here that the lens displays very little focus breathing, the image zooms in only a tiny bit when focusing more closely. What you can hear is the sound of the motor working in manual focus mode, picked up by the camera's internal microphone. Like I said, it's not a very smooth experience to manually focus. Well, let's look at the autofocus system. I tested it on a Fuji X-T3 camera with its original firmware, which was version 3.2 or something like that, and the lens's autofocus worked ok, but it was a bit unsure of itself, hunting around a bit. Then I updated the X-T3's firmware to the new version 4, and there was a huge change. As you can see here, the lens focuses reasonably quickly and confidently now, so update your camera's firmware, it makes a huge change. As you heard already, the lens's DC autofocus motor makes quite a noticeable noise as you go along, and makes that noise in manual focus mode too, so if you're filmmaking, you should record your sound on a microphone that's as far away from your camera as you can. As I mentioned, the lens does not have image stabilisation, although Fuji are beginning to implement this into their cameras now, slowly but surely. The filter thread size is 77mm and it comes with a medium sized plastic hood. Overall, the build quality is fantastic and very professional feeling. 
The focus system is slightly clunky and noisy, but it does work quite quickly and accurately, even at f1.0, which is the most important thing. Now, let's look at the all-important image quality. It's no trick to make a lens with an aperture as bright as f1.0, or even f0.95, or even brighter. There are a few of them available. The problem lies in designing them to have good image quality at those bright apertures, which almost never seems to be the case. Have Fuji finally managed to crack the puzzle here? Let's see. I'm testing it here on a 26 megapixel Fuji X-T3. In the middle of the image, straight from f1.0, we see a classic example of an image with very high resolution, but somewhat low contrast, and there's a little bit of purple fringing to be seen here too, on very contrasting edges. Still though, I'm really impressed with a great amount of detail being captured here, at such a bright aperture. You can always add extra contrast into your pictures and editing. That sharpness remains across most of the image frame, actually, but the far corners see some softness. Again though, every other lens I've tested at an aperture as wide as this has been significantly softer, so it's not an especially black mark for the lens here. Let's stop down to f1.4. There's no real difference in those image corners, but back in the middle, we see a lot more contrast now, and greatly reduced colour fringing. Stop down to f2 to see absolutely perfect image quality in the middle, and over in the corners, a little more detail. Image quality sees a slight improvement at f2.8, and at f4 and f5.6, we begin to see excellent image quality in those corners too, although they're not quite as perfect as the middle of the image was. Stop down as far as f11 or f16, and the image quality will of course begin to soften again, due to the effect of diffraction. Well, what can we say overall? First off, it's easily the sharpest lens I've ever tested at apertures brighter than f1.2. At f1.0, it's actually capturing a very impressive amount of detail, although if you want a bit more contrast, you'll have to stop down to f1.4, and if you want sharp corners, then stop down to about f4. Honestly though, this lens is really quite nice and sharp at f1.0, which is very exciting to see. Now let's have a look at distortion and vignetting. These are pictures taken in RAW and processed without corrections in third-party editing software. Normally, this will all be taken care of by your camera. As you can see, the lens projects just a little pincushion distortion here. Vignetting is surprisingly moderate. Those corners are a bit dark at f1.0, but I was expecting worse, quite frankly. They brighten a bit at f1.4, and a lot more at f2 and f2.8, so it's not a bad performance here, overall. Now let's check out close-up image quality. The lens can focus down to 70cm, so it's no macro lens. At f1.0, the close-up image quality is a little softer than at normal distances, but still pretty usable. Stop down to f1.4, f2, and f2.8 to see gradual improvements in sharpness. Let's see how well the lens works against bright lights. Fuji's coatings tend to do quite a good job in minimising flaring, and despite the extreme nature of the lens's optical design, they have done fairly well again. Flaring and glaring are not terribly strong, with flaring being restricted to just a green blob when a bright light is directly in the image. And now, let's take a look at the lens's bokeh, a vitally important question. I really liked the look of this lens's out-of-focus backgrounds. They tend to look smooth and clean and all-round gorgeous. If you want to nitpick though, a couple of noticeable things are a slight cat's eye shape to bokeh balls in the corners, and a very slight green outline to them too. Other than that though, those backgrounds look pretty wonderful. And finally, related to bokeh is longitudinal chromatic aberration. It's a bit noticeable on this lens, but not disastrous. Here you can see some intrusive colours at f1.0, which remain at f1.4 and f2, but at f2.8 are more or less gone. So then, overall, well, I've only recently upgraded to a Fuji X-T3 camera, which is a wonderful step upwards from my old X-T20, and the experience of using this lens on it for a week was out of this world. It's so cool to be shooting at f1.0 with autofocus. It's not a perfect lens by any means, as you will have seen a few of its little flaws at this point, but it's unique, very powerful, decently sharp at f1.0, and renders tunning images with beautiful out-of-focus backgrounds. Is it worth one and a half grand? 
that's obviously a huge price to pay for it, but I can easily imagine any dedicated Fuji user tripping over themselves to sell other equipment and save up for this little monster. It may be expensive, but Fuji's achievement with it has just about matched their grand ambition, it certainly comes recommended.